the thing that's happening that's brand new, that's very exciting and is surging in the last few years is the private sector. The antecedents to what we see in the newspapers pretty much every day or every week date back to the first tourists in space 20 or 25 years ago. Um, Dennis Tito, a billionaire, was actually the first space tourist. And the first eight or nine space tourists were paying tens of millions of dollars uh, to ride the Soyuz capsule from the Russians to the space station and spend a few days there. It's a tiny number of people. They were all extremely wealthy, and it doesn't seem like it applied to everyone else. Probably a more important moment came also about 20 years ago when the X Prize was announced. This was a challenge prize modeled on the prize that Charles Lindbergh won for the first transatlantic flight early in the 20th century, where a $10 million prize was given to any private entity or company, no governments were participating in this, who could do a repeat suborbital flight where that means 100 kilometers up. The Kármán line at 100 kilometers is the formal boundary of space. Now, the team that won this uh, ended up spending $100 million to win a $10 million prize, which gives the point of the X Prize that it spurs innovation and competition. And really, the X Prize marks the inception of the private space industry that we see now. The newspapers are, of course, dominated by three moguls or billionaires who are actively involved in this activity and have very ambitious plans for space. Richard Branson is an entrepreneur based out of the UK, uh, the president of the Virgin Group, and he formed the spaceship company by stealing Bert Rutan, the designer of the plane that won the X Prize, and he has ambitions for suborbital flights, not formally in true space. Virgin Galactic had a disaster with the loss of a co-pilot, the death of a co-pilot, and the near death of the pilot, and they were set back several years by that, and it looks like they will do their first commercial launches uh, last year, this year, and start taking money from private citizens in a year or so. Meanwhile, the twin powers of Blue Origins and X uh, and SpaceX are the companies that we see in the headlines all the time. Blue Origins is run by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, and he has essentially been cashing out a billion dollars of his Amazon stock every year for the last five or six to fund this company while it's not generating any revenue. 2021 was a landmark year for Blue Origin. They put 14 people into space, private citizens. SpaceX tends to get more headlines. Jeff Bezos doesn't like publicity and it's a little secretive. Elon Musk obviously loves publicity, so we read more about it. SpaceX was founded in the same year by Elon Musk, also the CEO of Tesla, and he's a billionaire too. What's notable about SpaceX is an enormous achievements in the last few years. They've now had 100 successful launches of their Falcon 9 rocket, and they're getting billions of dollars of revenue from partnerships with NASA to supply the space station. Remember, for, for 10 years after the space shuttle was grounded, the United States could not put astronauts in space at all or get them to the space station, having to rely on the Soviets. Obviously, that's a problem now, given current relationships between the two countries. But now SpaceX is doing that and filling the void. So these are the people, these are the pioneers of this new space. Rutan is perhaps less well known to most people. Branson, of course, gets quite a lot of publicity too. On the top right, Peter Diamandis, also not so known to the average member of the public. He's the founder of the X Prize Foundation and, and really an important figure in the history of the space program in the private sector. And then Elon Musk on the lower right. We also have Jeff Bezos and Yuri Milner, a Russian philanthropist who spent several hundred million dollars on the space activity. You might look at these people and wonder whether with uh, there's a little male pattern boldness thing going on and whether that's what you need to be a space mogul, perhaps. Well, these rockets are huge. Here we see the new SpaceX rocket, his giant rocket that will eventually get people to Mars, put on a spectrum with the other rockets of history. And finally, we are eclipsing the mighty Saturn V that went to the moon. And in terms of cost effectiveness, enormously cheaper than those old disposable rockets. The key to SpaceX and to the modern space program is reusability of the rockets. And that's a game changer for the economics. SpaceX is right up front. They want to go fast and break things and learn from their mistakes. And that's been successful for them. And they're also not shy about publicizing their failures. So here are some of their failures ending with their first success in a return landing in a reusable rocket.
And that, my friends, is rocket science. Uh, that final shot of return landing on an offshore platform and reusing the rocket, that, that was the game changer. That really is the launch of a new activity with an entirely different cost model. Now, although there's only been one death in Virgin Galactic in the private sector, we can imagine there will be disasters in the future. And the model here is civil aviation. On the left, you see a graph that shows the number of deaths per million passenger miles flown starting in the Second World War, going forward a few decades. And the death rate has declined by a factor of 100. Nobody thinks twice about flying, but flying commercially was actually quite hazardous in the 1920s and 30s. And the circles indicate times where new innovations were made in avionics or redundancy, or just safety of airplanes in general. So we don't think twice about flying in a plane. And the space pioneers imagine the same curve will be followed. It will be dangerous at the inception, safety will increase, costs will go down, and will follow the path of civil aviation. But being in space is dangerous. The economics are interesting because they're driven, of course, by the super wealthy billionaires. But there are a lot of billionaires on the planet. You can see that all the main moguls of space have spent a good fraction of their fortunes, uh, at least a billion dollars or so, on this activity. There are over 2,000 billionaires in the world. And of course, collectively, their worth of $10 trillion is phenomenal. And their collective worth per year could easily eclipse NASA's entire budget. So it's understandable that they are going to lead the charge on this activity. And it's no accident that as seen here in a Forbes valuation from this year, the two people leading the two private space companies that are preeminent are the two richest people on the planet with close to $200 billion of wealth each.